Do you think the governor was the impetus for this, or did this come from legislative leaders who were working while he was out of town? I'm glad you asked that, Ernie. I think that there, I mean, first of all, I, I know that we all can see now that we have an absentee governor, or at best, a part-time governor. However, there is absolutely not a shred of doubt in my mind that he signed off on this and said it was a good time to move forward. And how, how can I be so certain of that? Because as you know, when, when uh, Senator Fitzgerald was first on Charlie Sykes announcing he was going to bring it forward, the governor did pump the brakes. He did say, hold on one second here. You know, we've got the budget. And then Senator Fitzgerald made statements to the effect, well, I realize that maybe this isn't the best time. So why would he say that? Because clearly the governor in meetings that he had, and, and the governor's chief of staff told me personally, that they thought it was a mistake, that they were going to be talking to him. Because that's the first thing I did. When, when Senator Fitzgerald made that statement on Charlie Sykes, uh, I called Speaker Voss. I called Senator Schilling. Uh, I called the governor's office to meet with him and his chief of staff. Of course, I called my own legislative leadership team immediately so that we could begin to uh, you know, come together. And uh, we met with Eric Shute immediately. He was very, you know, we have a great relationship, I think, very highly of him as a person and as a leader. And uh, we met, and he said, look, I, we're, we're surprised. He brought it up at this juncture on the show, but we're going to talk to him. And, uh, of course, I put out, say, let's pump the brakes here, which they did. But it, this wouldn't go forward. With the guy that's the leader of the Republican Party in Wisconsin would like to be the leader of the Republican Party and our nation nationally. There's no question he wants it to come forward. Now, why would he want it to come forward? Because obviously he was taking water on his, um, uh, on this disastrous budget that he's put forward. Disastrous for who? For the middle class primarily, but for, for really for this entire state. It goes against our, our heritage, our values, the way we've approached things in the past. You know, I, I think of how, you know, my father, an immigrant who came to this country, you know, sacrificed mightily so myself and my sisters could go to college who, uh, you know, paid taxes uh, at higher levels than what you might normally pay because we had, you know, one of the best university systems uh, in the country, if not in the world. They, they made those sacrifices. And what's amazing to me is that in a time of relative prosperity, that you would cut $300 million from such an incredible value to our state. You know, we all brag about the Badgers and the Panthers when they're doing well. Or, uh, but what really counts is the education. You know, we support the teams as a symbol of that great institution that we have here. But that's only one of so many policies, and I don't want to go into great detail now, but if you want to go there, we'll, you know, we'll both go there. But, you know, clearly I think the timing of this, he was starting to take water. People around the country were saying, how can you have a $2 billion deficit when Minnesota and Iowa have a $1 billion uh, surplus in reserves? Indiana is a $2 billion surplus in reserves. What's going on there in Wisconsin? And... Uh, you know, so as a consequence, I think he needed a distraction. He always called it a distraction, and he thought that this would be the right time.